So let's go ahead and jump on in. There are really two big things we want to talk about today. One is the whole notion of how we share projects among several different people who are working together in a team. Kind of a very critical thing to do as we start working on larger projects because the ability to go through and just have a single person working on a project or to try and have several people work on a project but pass the single file around between all those different people can really slow down and impede the whole process. If you always have to wait for the last person to get finished before you can start making your changes, you start having all sorts of different troubles in terms of coordinating your work and just slowing things down. So you really want to have a process where we can use a file to allow several people to work in parallel, okay, let them make their changes and then reintegrate those changes. And that's what we're going to start out with today. We're going to look at the whole issue of something called work sets, which are available, which let us take advantage of the database capabilities within Revit to have several different people work on aspects of the data model. So just pieces where individuals can check out parts they want to work on, and then after they get done making their changes, check those back in and coordinate with other people who've checked out other pieces. Okay, So we'll start with that, and then we're going to go ahead and turn our attention to structural framing, kind of a different topic, but one of the last types of elements we want to teach you how to add to a building model. And that's where we're going to look at just the beams, the columns, the beam systems, and all the pieces that are actually necessary to support all those floors and roofs that we've been putting in there. We want to start adding that layer of detail into our models so that we can then start using the models for doing actual structural analysis and sizing of the members and really kind of take it to that next level of detail. Okay. So let's back up and we'll start with the whole issue of work sets and kind of see what's involved there. Try to test this out a little bit together because what we'd like to do is actually have you guys set up work sets so you can work together with your other member of your team. Okay. Okay. To make this all work, let me tell you what we're going to do. We are going to go ahead and take your project file, that project file that you love so much that has your assignment for uh, model into it, and we're going to put it on a file surfer volume. And the idea is we have to put it out there somewhere on a file server that's shared by several different people so that you can all get access to it. So the L drive, that CEE server, CEE 110 files, is a great place because people can get to that from all over campus. So it's a good one to use if you want to use that as your file server. Okay. What we're going to do is, and we'll all do this together, we're going to put a project out there you know, and give it a special name. It'll be like my project. And that special project, or that file, serves as what's called as the central database for the entire project. So we're actually going to give it the name My Project Central. We're going to give it that special name so you can distinguish that from the, your local copy of it, which you're going to learn to call a draft. So we have centrals, which are the central databases, and drafts are your local copies. Okay? So we're going to show you how to go through and say something, put it out there. Okay? The important thing to have happen as part of this whole process is that Everyone has to connect to that file server volume using the same path. So if you're here in the room, it is L colon backslash, and then whatever your folder is and your project name, you always want to be connecting to it as the L drive. Okay. Or as long as you have the same drive letter shared by all the members of your team, it has to be that same drive lever, letter. Now, Revit isn't smart enough to sort of figure out that the volume and the path to the volume works, it likes to actually think things in terms of that letter. So even though you most may be pointing the CEE server by different letters, you have to make sure that it's the same letter every time you access the central, because that's the, what it stores as the path to the central. Okay? So let's just go ahead and start with that and make sure everyone's kind of set up. Now for most of the people here in the room, it's not an issue. Most of you have the L drive sitting out there just right on your desktop and you haven't ever to worry about really how you got to that. Let me go ahead and minimize Revit for a second and show you, if you aren't in that situation, what you have to do. Okay, I actually have the CE or server set up here also. Let me see if I can open it. Okay, there it is. Let me tell you how you would get to this if you hadn't had this set up. If you are working on your own desk, um, la laptop computer and you don't have the L drive there by default, okay. Um, or if you are working at home off of campus, okay, and you want to connect the L drive, let's start with the off campus issue first. The first thing we need to do is if you're trying to come at things from off campus, is we need to get you onto Stanford's virtual private network, a VPN, and that makes it think, your machine think that you're here on the Stanford network. If you need to download that software, it's actually easy to find. If you just look on Google Stanford VPN client download, okay. It'll take you to a site and you can download. There's a Cisco client that you put on your machine. And it's very simple. If you run it, 
it connects you into the Stanford network, and then it, your computer thinks you're physically here at Stanford. All it really takes is your SUNET ID and a password. Okay, and you're connected on in there. So first, go ahead and get yourself on the network. Okay, once you're into the Stanford campus network, you're then able to go through and try and connect to the file server. And you can do it by typing in that URL CEE server and CEE 110 files. Now I'm going to do it in a slightly different way because I not only want to connect to it, but I also want to do something called mapping it to my network drive. Okay, And how you do that is, let me just go out to computer. You'll even find map network drive right over there. Every version of Windows is a little bit different about where you'll find it, but you can almost always get it by right clicking on things. Find map network drive, and this is the place where you can say, okay, where do you want to map that folder? And I'm going to put it on the L drive. It's already there, so it'll complain in a second, but I'll put it here. CEE server, CEE 110 files. And as soon as you do that, it's already connected. That's okay, I'll replace it. Okay. What's going to happen is it's going to show up as my L drive. Okay, so you want to do that. That'll work from within parallels. It should work from within fusion. Yeah, Darrell, what you got? I had an issue where on the other branch of the camp, and I was on campus, and I was trying to access that from my computer, and it would only let me access like two, like all the folders were locked except for maybe like two folders. Really? Usually what happens then is it means that you're set up so that you're syncing offline, but it doesn't actually have a live connection. Okay. So it, it usually means there's something about the connection that's not quite active. Don't know. Like if you can get it to happen here in class again, we'll take a look at it and see if we can debug it. Yeah. But even that happens sometimes on these machines if the uh, network cable gets disconnected. And if you ever go into the L drive and you only see a few folders there and you can't get to the other ones, check the network connection. It's usually just that you're, you're offline. Okay. So get yourself onto the L drive. That's the big thing to start out with. Once you're on the L drive, go out there and let's create a folder for you. So let's go ahead and, oh, I'm going to call myself Team GLK2, because that's class 2. Go ahead and create a folder for your team. It's going to be much better, actually, if you go through and give yourself a folder, as opposed to lying loose on the desktop. Um, it's similar. What you have to do over there, let me kind of pop on out. Pardon me for everyone getting dizzy watching that. You connect to the server, and then you type in this address, SNB CEE server. Okay, that'll kind of route you through. Okay, when I do that, and I connect to it, I get that same sort of dialog. Again, we'll log in as CEE 110 and BMW. And I can connect that out to my Mac. If you connect it on your Mac and you're working with a lot of tools, it'll then show up under Parallels or show up under VMware, because a lot of times you have that set up so it automatically maps your Mac volumes to the desktop. Okay, But the key is try and make sure it's the same letter that it's associated with, whatever it is that you're using here, because when it goes looking for the central file later, it's going to want that same letter. So let's come back over here. I've got my team GLK. Okay, looks like some more are popping in there. OK, so go ahead. We're going to store our files in there in just a second. But first thing is just get everyone connected to the file server. Very, very important, because in order to get out there and go to that central library where everything is that you're going to check out, we need to be able to get to that server. Next thing I want you to do is, if you've popped into Revit and you've already opened your file, go ahead and close your specific file, because before you even get into your file, I'm going to have you change your name. Okay, and here's the deal. As we go working together, okay, it's very important that we all have unique names, so the changes I make can be differentiated from the changes you make and everyone else makes. Okay, so you always have to sort of tell Revit who you are, so that it understands that you are this person and that what you know, any changes that have been checked out to that person should be available to you. Okay, so it's really giving it your identity. And the way you do that is as follows: If I come on into Revit, 
and I go up to the application menu and pull down to options. Go ahead and do this with me, so we'll need it in a second here. You get this dialog where we can change the username. You'll see usernames hanging around right in the center of the dialog. And if I choose that username, I'm going to call myself Glenn Mack. Say OK. Okay. And again, that's all about just setting it up so that you will be different than your neighbor. Yes? No, you'll actually have two unique names because when you check it out, it'll be to you or your teammate. Okay, and that way, your changes and her changes won't overwrite each other. So again, I'll go to options. I'll say, here's the username. I'll go ahead and put that in there. And then from here on out, as I work, wherever I work, Make sure that if you're going to be working on your shared project file, that when you come to that machine, you set that machine to think it's you, not someone else. Okay, Because you'll need to have the same matching name to be able to get back in and get access to everything that you've checked out under that name. That's really what it comes down to. Okay, Having done all that, we're ready for the next step, which is really just to open your project. Let me go ahead and I'll open one that I've been working with. It's out on the L drive. You're welcome to open it too, or you can open your own assignment for a project. Let me come on out here. I'm going to find, oh, uh, where'd it go? Cats Glen. Under session 14, I have a little example that I set up to get started with collaboration. I'll say OK. The idea is, I've been working on this file by myself, and it's time now to share it with someone else so we can both be working on it. So I'm going to open up that first one. Okay. As we're doing this, one member of your team should do this. Only one person needs to create this central library, then we're going to share it with the other person. So look across, figure out which of you is going to do it. But one of you open up the file that you want to work with. The other one, kind of hang tight for just a second. So you'll see here's a file. I've been in phase three doing some design work. I got a little building hanging around out here. It's not a great little building, but it's a starting point. And as I continue to work, I should be in good shape. Okay, so I'm hanging here. That part's looking fine. What I'm going to do is let me save as this project. And what I'm going to do is put that over in that team folder. So I'll go on over to wherever that oh, special location is that I'm sharing. Pulling down a little far. There I am. I will go ahead and call this my assignment for shared. Actually, I might as well even beat the, I'm going to call it central, because ultimately it is going to be the central. Let me go ahead and save that away. Work sharing isn't turned on yet, so it doesn't show me anything there. Let me just save that away. Okay, And now we are ready to actually turn on work sharing for the project. Now, turning on work sharing is kind of like one of those big steps in your life. Once you do it, you can never go back. <laughs> okay, so, or at least for your project anyway. So go ahead and think about whether you need it or not. If it's really just you and only you and you can really just work async, I can pass it off back and forth and not have to worry about kind of checking in and checking out. Stay that way. Life is sort of simpler that way. But if you really want to work together and in parallel and have all your changes coordinated, okay, go ahead, turn on work sharing. Work sharing is definitely it's an okay thing to do in terms of what's going on. It just sort of complicates life a little bit because it adds this layer you have to go through all the time of making sure you have the right things checked in or checked out, as opposed to your individual file where you have everything to always available to you. Okay, So we're hanging around in here. I want to start collaborating. So what I'm going to do is go to the Collaborate tab. And you'll find right over here on the left-hand side a notion called Work Sets. When we want to go ahead and use work sets, it's going to give you a little warning saying, you know, oh, you're about to do work sharing. It requires careful planning and management. So you can either enable it or cancel it if you'd really rather not go down this path. 
Okay, and we're going to say OK. What it's going to do is actually move all the levels and grids. Those are things that are sort of, everyone needs to access to those in a folder called, share or a work set called shared levels and grids. It's going to move everything else into something called work set one. And that's fine as a starting point. I'll say OK to those things. So before you do this, make sure that you have, have like the username set to so what you want it to be. So it'll do a little uh, kind of messing around here. It'll do some updating and saving. OK, as soon as I've gone through and done that, you'll notice that I actually have a special dialog showing up. Okay, It's showing me basically the different work sets which are available in the project right now and who has them checked out. And you'll see I have everything checked out. I'm still being very piggy about this because I'm going to go ahead and do a little allocating things between some work sets. So I'm going to hang on to everything. So whoever that person is creating the shared central, hang on to this for just a second. What I'm going to do is as follows. I'm going to create a couple new work sets. I'm going to, and how you break up your work sets really is a matter of just how it makes the most sense to work on your team. I'm going to create ones called exterior walls, interior walls, and furniture. That's one way I might break up the project. You could create a work set that says architectural and have another one that says structural. Just You could break it up by different firm names so that everyone working in one firm is working on one set of things. Everyone in a different firm is working in a different set of things. You could break it up just under your three different names, or your two different names, or your project members. Whatever it is, it's just a way of coordinating who has control of what. Okay. So I'm going to go for the exterior. I'll create another one called interior walls. And finally, I'm going to create one called furniture. Again, I want to hang on to all of these right now because as the master of this little set of work sets right now, I'm going to do a little divvying up of all the objects in the project to those different work sets. Okay, Because right now, they're all hanging around in work set one. But I want to sort of start allocating some over here. I'm going to put some over there so different people can work on them. Say OK. Okay. And when you're done with all that, go ahead and give yourself another save. It's going to say this is the first time that I've actually saved after we've had work sets, set sets enabled. Okay. Do you, what is it, therefore become the central file? Do you want to save this? Say yes. Uh, again, this is where you're sort of making the big change. I guess that other one was sort of a little preliminary warning. It didn't make the change yet. Let me pop back over the slides. Maybe I can show it better over there. Okay. First thing that happens is you get this thing, which basically says that we're going to create the work sets. We're in the tool. Confirm that you want to enable it. And then we're going to move our model elements into the appropriate work sets. This is the dialogue we were looking at in terms of exterior walls, interior walls. What I do here is just create different work sets by clicking on the New button. Okay, And for each of those different work sets, I can decide whether it's going to be editable or editable or not. We'll go back and take a look at that in the middle. But see if you can get yourself a couple different work sets set up over there. Almost done. The first time, it actually takes quite a bit of time to sort of create this central database. What it's doing is taking all those individual elements that end up in a single file. And it's actually making a bazillion little files that sort of separate it all out in different pieces so we can check out each of the different pieces independently. Okay, You don't see very much of that. It all happens behind the scenes for you, but that's what's actually going on there. Okay, So I am now in a work, sec sec work setted environment, work shared environment. And if I go back to work sets, you can see what I have checked out and what I don't have checked out. OK, here's the idea. There's a bunch of different work sets. I'm currently checking them all out right now. I have them all open right now. They're all editable to me. OK, I can go ahead and release some of those different work sets because other people are going to work on them. Before I do that, though, let me take my things that are sitting in work set one. I'm going to allocate them to a different work set, and then I'll release it. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is just say cancel to this. And I've got my big old building here in building three. That's the one that I'm going to share. So I am going to grab my whole building over there. Okay. And I want to move that into a work set. Now, when I'm moving that building into a work set, there's one sort of important thing you have to know about curtain walls. Because curtain walls, and I bet a lot of you have curtain walls in your projects. 
Okay, all the different elements, including the curtain wall panels and the grids, are highlighted here. Turns out I don't want to. What is it? Yeah. If I move the walls into the work set, it'll move the entire curtain wall, including the panels and the grids, in there too. So you don't have to move them both. If you try to move the curtain wall panels and grids, it'll just complain at you and it won't let you make the selection. So I'm going to only select the walls and the floors. Can you, can you move that box? Again? Can you move that box? Oh, it's right up here in the upper left-hand corner. There's the filter. Looks like a big funnel. Okay, so go ahead and grab what you want to put in there. Again, I'll do it. I'll filter these things out. By default, they're all selected. I can check none or just turn them off individually. I just want to get the fall walls and the floors. And we can do this for a number of different things. If you want to go ahead and put all the furniture in one thing, we can sort of just, you're, basically all we're doing is allocating different pieces of the model to different work sets so we can divvy up who can work on what. That's all we're after right now. So I can choose those things. Once I've chosen, chosen just the floors and the walls, I can say instance properties. And then you'll actually see there's a work set property we haven't seen in the past. It's under the instance properties. I can put those things in exterior walls. Say OK. And what it's going to do is just move them. It's just move them from exterior or from work set one into exterior walls. That work set that now someone else can work on if we need to. Okay now. For the next step, I need a volunteer, someone who's just been following along but hasn't been creating their work sets. Someone who I can share with. So any volunteers? Are, are you connected, Darrell? How about you, Derek? Derek, are you connected? You're 2011. How? Who else is following? I'll take any volunteer. Oh, come on! Someone's got a volunteer. Oh, okay, right. you're doing it. Yeah. Got it. Okay, excellent. Let's go ahead, and we'll have you basically. What I'm going to do is as follows. I am going to hang on just a second. We'll get you going. I'm going to go back to collaborate. I'm going to go to work sets, and I am going to say, you know, all those furniture and interior walls and things like that. I'm going to release those. I'm going to make those non-editable. What I'm really doing is I'm checking them back into the library and making them available to someone else right now. Okay? I'll check out the work set too. I'll say that's non editable also. That's going to be okay. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to synchronize it with Central. What that's really doing is basically saying check it all back in, put everything back on the shelves where people can find it. Okay, and just keep the part that I want checked out. So yeah, Cody. When I created a work set, yours took a long time to load. Mine didn't do anything. I just pressed OK. And it sort of happened quickly? As long as you go up to work sets and it's still, uh, it shows you those list of works that you're probably OK. I think just me, through the Mac, through the wireless, through a number of things, I'm in a very slow situation where you're in a faster situation. Yeah. Ah, what you do is just on the Collaborate tab, Right up here at the top, it should be available. You should just be able to click it. Mine's grayed out. It's grayed out. Do you have work sets set up yet? Uh, yeah. Okay. Hmm. It could be there's just nothing to synchronize just yet. Did you move some things into that work set? I, I moved some things into the interior things, but I have to walk. Okay, that should be okay. Let me come on back. We'll take a look. And we'll get everyone else a chance to catch up here. And then we'll uh, keep on going. So we're hanging. You got the work sets. That's good. Why don't we go ahead, let's just go ahead and turn off like the interior. We'll make a small change. The furniture. Say non-editable. Yeah, and then it's OK. Oh, and then you can, OK. That's OK. Go ahead and close that. What it's saying is it can't do it until you uh, say, go ahead and do the first do a save. OK, the first time that you may, OK. So the first time you save it, it'll first create it into a central file. And then when you go back and you synchronize, will be available now. OK, you got to give it that one save first. OK, let's come on back. We're hanging over here. Let me open up my work sets dialog. I think I've synchronized with Central. Take a look at my work sets. OK, Glenn Mac has the exterior walls and has the shared levels and grids. Why don't you go to Team GLK2? Oops, actually, I'm going to do one other thing. You can open the Central. That's fine. As you're opening that central, let me do this thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save as. And what I'm going to do is actually go through and save a project.
And what I'm going to do is actually make it, instead of the central, I'm going to call this my draft. Okay. What I'm doing is actually creating my own little copy of it. The central is the central database. That's like going to the library. My draft is my copy of it that only has the elements that I can, well, what is it? It has the current state about what I've checked out stored in it. So you always have the central, and then you have your draft, which was what you pulled out of the library. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that again. Which one do you want me to open up? You go ahead and open central. Because what's going to happen is you're not going to open my draft. My draft belongs to me. You're going to go to the library and open central. Okay, and then you're going to pull some different things out of the library. That sort of make sense? Let's see if everyone sort of got that. So for if you're hanging around and you've done your save to central already and you've already you've chosen which work sets you want, now go through and say save as and you save it and maybe name it draft. Draft with your initials so your teammates will know that's your copy, not their copy. So when we get all done, you're going to have a central, then you're going to have drafts for each of the different people on your team. And their draft is really their portal to get to the things that they've checked out. Okay. You in to central? Great. Go open your work sets dialog. And why don't you, in the work sets dialog, open up, why don't you grab the, uh, like the interior and the furniture? And you, say, you choose it, then you say editable. OK. Then save as a draft for you. So save as and make your own draft. And let me go back over here and take a look. You'll notice that all of a sudden my machine seems to know that Kevin has the interior walls and furniture checked out. OK, and that's going to come in very, very useful to us. The idea is each of the different work sets can be checked out by different people. We have all sorts of notions going on here. One is whether or not it's editable to me. So I have edi editing access to exterior walls and shared levels and grids. Kevin has furniture and interior walls. That part's cool. There's also this whole issue of whether something is opened or closed. Let's talk about what that's all about. If I can't edit something and it's going to take up a lot of memory, I can just actually close it. When I close it, it just sort of clears it out so it's not even taking up space on my machine. Okay? And in a very large project that's getting huge, that's helpful to go to just close out the work sets that you're not editing on. That, that way, uh, it's just not slowing down your machine with all the extra overhead. So we have work sets. And under each of the different work sets, there's the question of whether it's open. I have them all open right now, but whether or not it's editable. Yes, no, yes, no. OK. Let's go ahead and stop right there before I go to the next step. So you know, questions? You look puzzled. Are you doing OK? You're sort of wondering where this is all going? Um, is it working for you? or Yeah. I know, it moves very. Like, like, Let's see if we can get you caught up. So where are you now in terms of, do you have some work sets? Yeah, I have some work sets. Excellent. <laughs> do you, have you saved, OK. Uh, OK, you've got some work sets. Have you saved the draft with some of your work sets? So that's the thing is that we don't, we don't have the next building set. Oh, no worries. That's OK. The network connection is sort of a whole funky thing. I'm not sure what's going on there. It could be any number of things. So I don't really know what's going there. Let's go ahead and just close that. Yeah. We were trying to like save a central version of the draft. We might have deleted the version we were working on. Or I might have deleted the version I was working on. No worries. How about this? Let me keep going. We'll get everyone caught up at the break in terms of trying to get everyone set up. So no worries. If you're, if you're fine right there, let's just do it that way. So it's always you create the central, and then you go through, and you go through and create these drafts at every individual. So I've got my draft. Kevin, you got a draft too? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So if, you're, if you can't follow along right now, that's okay. We'll get you caught up at the break. But let me just show you how it actually works. Okay. The idea is once we've gone through and created these things, all these different sort of layers, what you want to do is as follows. So go through, close anything you don't need, and save a draft file. Give it a special name so you know it's a draft. What we want to start actually doing now is editing work sets and editing the things in work sets. And let me show you how this works. The idea is there's always one active work set. The active work set is where new things are going to be put as you go through and create them. And we can actually even gray out things which are inactive so we don't get confused about which things we have access to and don't. 
So we're back over to the project now. Let me say OK to this. And let's take a look at how this actually works. Okay, I am currently set to a non-editable work set. Let me change that to be one of the work sets I can edit, exterior walls. Okay, and if I go through and I start making changes now, what will happen is as follows. I can go through and move some walls. I can come through and move some walls. Okay, so I've made some changes to the project. I can also even go through and add some new walls. And if I add some new elements, they're going to be created in that work set. So I'm going to go through, I'll choose a different type. And as part of my editing, I will go through and just, oh, make some wall. I'll put it out here. It'll be in the exterior walls work set. Okay, so far so good. When I am done making my changes, or I just want to check them in so that Kevin can see what's going on too, what I'm going to do is say synchronize with central. And when I do, first time it'll give me that dialog. Okay. It'll put them out there into the library. It'll be available now for Kevin to go ahead and pick up. So if Kevin goes ahead and on his machine he either says synchronize or relay lotus, reload latest, jeez, I'm speaking backward today. Um, you should pick up those new changes that I have made. Okay, so I can make changes. I check them into the central, and Kevin can see them. Okay, Kevin, how about you switch on over? So in active work sets, you say interior walls. Okay, go ahead and just draw me some interior walls in there. Um, yeah, you can do it on top if you're in the 3D view, or you can go to one of the floor plans. It doesn't really matter wherever you put them. So. Just make some walls, doesn't really matter too much. Okay. After you've created a couple walls in the interior walls work set, say synchronize with central. Okay, go ahead and give it a synchronize. Yes, question. What will happen is the central always has the current state. So if I put in a wall and save it to central, it's in. If you take it out and save it to central, then it's out. Yeah, so it's, the central is really always the current state. So all that we're doing is really all about just managing who had the last access to it and making sure that the central is always the up-to-date spot. Okay. Yes. No. What will happen is if you still have the furniture set checked out, he can't change it yet. He, he, can, he can ask you to give him that piece temporarily. We'll show you how to do that in a second. He can borrow that piece, but you still have it until you relinquish it. That's the notion of finally you put it back in and it's up for grabs again. Okay. So let's see what Kevin did. What I'm going to do is I can either synchronize percent with central or I can reload the latest. The big difference is if I synchronize, what's going to happen is I'm going to post any changes I made, and I'm also going to pull Kevin's changes back. Versus reload the latest, I'm just pulling Kevin's changes. I'll just do a synchronize. Say OK. Let's see if we came up with anything. OK. Kevin has put all sorts of interior walls into my space, and uh oh, did you take them back out again? No. I changed them. Oh, I see. Okay. So now they look like this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Before display, I see. It's interesting. It caught you halfway through. I did it in 3D the first time, and it freaked out. Very good. So here's what's going on now. If I go zooming on in and I try to change those walls, okay, I'm not going to be able to see how it's at that little like, no, you cannot do this. I'll show you how you can in just a little bit, but for the most part, you can only change things in the work sets you have checked out. Okay, so how about this? Why don't, actually, Kevin, why don't you relinquish? Go into the work sets and t turn over the furniture. Make it non editable, and then say synchronize. And then I'll go in and I'll make it editable for myself. I'll check out the furniture. So, what Kevin's going to check out the furniture right now, or yeah, check it in, excuse me. I'll say work sets. Notice Kevin doesn't have it checked out anymore. I'll say make it editable to me. 
sure, I'll make it the active work set that if I put anything new into it, then I'll make it happen in that work set. I can place some components now. So what am I going to do? Oh, what do I have some things in here? There's some desks. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some desks. I'm a little, oh, it's putting them on level one right now. I'm in the 3D view, so it's not showing them to me. Let me go down to uh, level one, phase three. There they are. OK, they're just down on level one. OK, I have put some desks down in there on level one. OK, let's go ahead and I will synchronize my changes with all my desks. Synchronize, save with central. How about this, Mr. Kevin? Can you go through and maybe clean up those first floor walls and give me a nice office to contain those things? Sure. Okay, <laughs> when you say reload the latest, you should get my furniture objects. OK, so if you're working along over there, let's see if we can actually get you to have like a couple different work sets and swapping things between. If you're having troubles, don't worry. We'll try to get you caught up at the break. But let's go ahead and see if we can at least get a couple different work sets set up. OK, you got some new walls for me? Uh, yeah. OK, no worries. Go ahead and save yours up to the central. Yes. You're basically posting it to the central thing. These are the new changes. That's the current state. We can always back up a little. There's some hidden back doors, but you can get to it. All right, okay. Let me say reload the latest. Okay, and there's my new walls. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, let's go through and try something a little bit different. How about, Kevin, why don't you release the interior walls? Just go ahead and release those completely. Then synchronize that. Actually, I don't think you need to synchronize after that. I think just after releasing it, you'll be fine. OK. And let me show you how this works. Let's come back over here. The idea is there is an active work set. As you're placing things in the work set, it'll always go into whatever the active one is. It's sort of like putting things in the right phase or putting things in the right design option. If you have those things set up, it'll be the one that you put it into. And you can gray out the inactive work sets. That's actually a handy thing. Let me show you that. If I gray out the inactive work sets, all that's going to happen is I've currently, I'm in, the fill, I'm in the furniture work set, so the wall ones are showing just a slightly grayer. So I know I'm focusing on the fact that I'm working on furniture right now, as opposed to the other elements which aren't active right now. OK, let me come back over here. There's the whole idea of synchronizing. Synchronizing checks in your edits. It also updates your draft with any changes that were made to the central. Or if you want to, you can just reload the latest. Reloading the latest, just pulling things in from the central. It doesn't actually post your things. So if you just need an intermediate update, but you're not ready to release your changes to the rest of the team, you can just reload. OK. There's this whole notion of relinquishing. And let's talk about that. Relinquishing is really just a fancy way of saying you're checking things back into the library. OK. So you can say relinquish all mine, which you want to do sometimes at the, when you're done working, put them all back into the database. As you exit the program, it'll also ask you, do you want to relinquish your currently checked out work sets? Okay. And the answer there really depends on, are you going to keep on working remotely, or are you going to, do you really want to put them back in? If you want to keep on working with it, if you're on your laptop and you'd like to keep them checked out so you can keep on making changes, and I'll check them in later, don't relinquish. Because as soon as you relinquish, you won't have access to them anymore. Okay, so. It's going to keep encouraging you to relinquish, because the idea is you'd like to get things back in the library or on the shelves so that other people can pull them out. OK, but keep on hanging on them as long as you need. Yes, Cody? Okay, so what happens if, um, say you're working on the interior walls, yes. and you have an interior wall that's attached to an exterior wall that gets changed by someone else? Yeah. It's actually sort of a funny hitch in the way it's all set up right now. 
Things that are in two different work sets can't be joined together. Okay, so if the exterior and the, if we have them in two different work sets, they aren't physically attached to each other, so it won't follow directly. If we have something where we do want to keep things joined, like it may make sense to go through and say that if the exterior walls and the interior walls need to keep on moving and joining with each other, we put them in the same work set so we don't separate them. Yeah? So since this whole work set thing is to be obtained, yeah. um, how, how do you just go back to one project? It's actually, there's no easy way to go back. It's, yeah, it's a, once you're here, what you can do is basically, okay, that would be the equivalent of saying that ultimately, really, you're going to everyone, you're, you're gonna have one file, the central file, and everyone's just going to check it out individually and get everything in it at the same time. Okay, but there's no easy way to go back. That's why it's kind of set up with that whole warning up front that if you're going to go down this path, okay, there's a little overhead in it. It's one of those things, it's definitely, it is a good path, so I'd encourage you to work out whatever bugs we're having in terms of trying to get the coordination to work. It is a good thing to do, but it's definitely, it's a layer of complexity that just sort of like, yeah, makes life a little bit harder. Yeah, Jarrell. We're kind of checking things out based on uh, exterior walls and interior walls. Where would you uh, export this? Could you give somebody like the front wall and the interior wall section? Yes. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about that. Darrell's kind of got a very good question there. Let me kind of show you what he has in mind. So the idea is, rather than saying interior or exterior, it may make sense to divide it up sort of the front wing and the back wing or something like that. And that would be A-OK. -okay. I could go ahead and say the front of the building and say the back of the building. Okay. Let me go ahead and let me check out everything just so I temporarily have control of everything. And then what I can do is say that this part over here, front of the building, which could include interior and exterior walls, that's sort of for Cody's question. Let me filter out this thing with the curtain wall panels because they're going to come as part of the same thing. Say, OK, I've got them selected. And now I can, in the instance properties, instead of saying put them in the exterior walls, I'll put them in the front of the building. OK. And that may be a more sensible way. It all depends on your work process. If you've divided it up so one of you is doing the auditorium and all the options there, and one of you is doing the student center, and one of you is doing building three, OK, go ahead and whatever is going to be the best organization that matches the way your team works. OK? So let's go ahead. I'm going to synchronize again. And I will try something that involves taking care of uh, what? Grabbing elements that I uh, don't own. OK, so let me do this. Let me go ahead and get rid of some of these different ones. And we'll say make those non-editable. And I'll just have the exterior walls right now. For the purpose of this, how about Kevin? Can you go ahead and like uh, you check out the furniture again? Okay, and if you want to go ahead and put some more pieces of furniture in there, that's okay. As he's putting some pieces of furniture in there, let me go ahead and try making some changes to the walls. So I ha currently have checked out the interior walls or the exterior walls, excuse me. Okay, if I want to go ahead and move one of these interior walls, let me try that. I'll unjoin that. That's fine. That's just more of a geometry thing. What's happening is I'm trying to move something which is an interior wall, but I don't have that work set checked out. Okay, here's the way it works. If you don't have the work set checked out, you're allowed to borrow elements. Okay, so you try to change an element that you haven't checked out. If it hasn't been checked out by any other people, it'll just let you borrow it. Because oh, no one else has this out. I'll let you have it for right now. Okay, so and that is not that is just that one wall. It's the one element that you've grabbed. Okay, you can go ahead and just grab them temporarily. It'll be yours. You borrowed that element until you go ahead and synchronize it back. So if I come back over here and I look at the work sets, you'll see that what's happened is on the interior walls, I've actually borrowed an interior wall. So I'm showing up as one of the borrowers right now, and that's okay. I've borrowed that one wall. Okay, 
since I've borrowed that one wall, no one else can change that wall until I actually relinquish it. Okay, they could borrow, uh, they could play with the other interior walls, but they can't play with that one. Okay, let's go ahead. Let me reload the latest and see what Kevin's come up with us on the furniture front. Okay, go ahead and save it. So I can just borrow things. Borrowing is nice as long as you're connected to the network. Okay, you can borrow things and grab things that you just didn't happen to check out. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Okay, let me reload yours. Actually, reloading will give you my, your, oh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There's a little car in the building, I believe. Is that what that is? Yes, it is. Okay, if Kevin currently has the interior, the furniture as well as cars, there's nothing that says you have to put furniture inside the furniture layer, the furniture work set. Okay, and I want to, oh, you put some chairs in there too, thank you. Okay, if I try to grab one of these elements, which Kevin currently has checked out, it'll say, you know, I'd like to give that to you, but Kevin currently has it checked out, so he needs to relinquish it. So what I can do is actually place a request. Let me show you what that looks like. If I say place a request, okay, Kevin, why don't you go to the Collaborate tab? And under Collaboration, you should find Editing Requests. And under Editing Requests, you should actually see a request for me to go ahead and grab some of your one of your elements. Okay. Go there, if you choose that request and say grant it. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Beautiful. You released it to me. Because you've given that to me, I can now go ahead and move that. You've temporarily granted me access to this one. So I can move it wherever I want to. Super. Now again, I've borrowed that one. Again, only that one. So if I try to move another one or your car, What's well, interesting? Had you released the uh, furniture? Um, not that I know of. What layer? I guess I still have it. Really? Yeah. What layer is that in? Um, ah, it's in interior walls. You don't have interior walls checked out. <laughs> okay. That's no worry. Here, let me put it back in your furniture layer. Actually, I'll see if it'll let me do this. Since you have it checked out, I'm not sure it will. Okay. I think it's back in your layer now. That's interesting. Do you have furniture checked out right now? I think you should have access to that now. Let me s oh, let me synchronize with Central. Okay, and let that go. So here's your basic workflow. Let's talk about what you need to do at the tail end of this process. Okay, so now again, that one's not editable. I still have those right there. Let me go to work sets. And for that furniture, let me go ahead and make it non-editable. Give it back to Kevin. Okay, now if I try to move those, it'll be blocked again. Okay. So the workflow is basically take the uh, take your project file, make a central out of it. Kind of create some work sets. Save that away as the central library. Okay. Then come back and it one at a time, open the central, pull out a few of the work sets that you want to work with, save it as a draft. That draft includes which work sets you've checked out. Okay, Work on that draft and keep synchronizing. When you come back in later, since you've already created a draft, okay, don't go back to the central, go to your draft. Okay, Make changes within your draft and keep on posting that back to the central. The draft is really just your personal custom portal to the central. So you always want to be making changes in your draft and then synchronizing it with the central. So you're always opening the draft, making changes in the draft, checking out work sets into the draft, resyncing the changes you made, <coughs> and then ultimately quitting out of your draft. So once you've set up the draft, the draft is your way to get into it as opposed to coming through the central. Just leave the central as the central library on the database server that all the different drafts can connect to and it serves as the central coordination between all your work. Does that make sense? Okay, this will make a lot more sense as you actually sort of start to play with it. So let's take our break right now. And for anyone who's having trouble getting this all set up, let's come around and try and get you going on your different machines. Okay, so hang on. We'll let me get the front row, then we'll get you back there. So let me